Hi guys, uh, welcome. So today we're gonna talk about uh, Azure well architected framework, what it is, how it works, and the likes. Right? This is going to be a very introductory video. I'm just gonna browse through it for a couple of minutes, just giving you guys a high level of what this thing entails and what it is essentially. So if we look at what uh, well architected uh, framework is essentially in Azure it literally gives us the idea around how to build good quality software right it has multiple pillars that actually promotes uh, cost, cost effective uh, solutions so there is cases where people develop software in Azure and their costs are just above board right so this well architected framework kind of guides you into how to save uh, on your Azure cost or resource cost essentially. Then it speaks about uh, secured according to requirements. So what that essentially means is business requirements will be different and will require us to basically uh, secure solutions differently, right? If I am building an e-commerce that doesn't require people to log in and the payment page essentially is hosted by a third party, then why do we need, let's say, a login screen or whatever the case might be. But contrary to that or in line with that, we have cases where we could suffer a DDoS attack for argument's sake, right? Cross-site scripting, you know, the oh, sub, um, top 10 kind of list that they always update, right? We are still exposed to those kind of issues. So the requirements will basically guide us in terms of what sort of security measures should we put in our architecture designs, right? Resilience, availability, and recoverable. What does that mean, right? It simply means your system should be running as anticipated when it's anticipated. Be able to give users their information as and when they need it, right? We have, if you're experienced in software development, you'll probably know that systems go, go down. And when that happens, you want your system to be in a position that you can recover information and you can be able to restore it into full operational and accurate state, essentially, right? Then we talk about responsible development and operations. What does that mean? That is more uh, people-centric. And here we uncover a lot of things around communication tools, around uh, our release strategies around our coding standards and so forth, right? In your architecture, you kind of need to touch on those things so that you minimize friction across the development process. And finally, this one is uh, accomplishing purposes on time. Literally, this is the performance efficiency pillar, right? We talk about does this solution actually meet the customer's a requirement from a perspective where we look about performance. If a web page, for argument's sake, takes five minutes to load up, we have a problem. But if a web page literally takes seconds, I think that will keep customers happy, right? Obviously, some of uh, this performance uh, requirements that we're talking about needs to be realistic. You can't just run lightning fast if the process is actually slow. It depends on the case, and you actually need to assess if that is really applicable in the space that we are in. So thank you very much and hopefully you'll come into the next set of videos in this series. I'll be talking in detail this pillars that I just mentioned here. So just remember, well architecture framework talks about cost optimization pillar, security pillar, reliability pillar, operational excellence pillar, performance efficiency uh, pillar as well. Thank you very much.